When is a kiss? Not exactly a kiss. A landscape, more than just a landscape. Or a portrait, something, well, surreal. In the world of Belgian painter René Magritte, nothing is what it seems. Magritte is all about making pictures that make you think about pictures. He's the artist who looks at ordinary objects, but in these extraordinary ways. Like a fireplace with a locomotive dashing out under full steam, or this portrait of a man made of a birdcage. This picture epitomizes sort of the way Magritte creates very clear pictures, and the longer you look, the more you realize that their meaning is absolutely unclear. Anne Umland is the curator of The Mystery of the Ordinary, an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York that focuses on the evolution of Magritte's work from 1926 to 1938. It's a time when he makes quantitatively and conceptually more works in more modes, more varieties than he ever had before. It is this period when Magritte becomes Magritte. René Magritte was born in Lacine, a small town in Belgium in 1898. Not much is known about his childhood. His father was a textile merchant, and when Magritte was 13, his mother committed suicide. I think what was probably even more impactful on him than the event of the death itself is that he would remain, when he was a young boy, locked in a room with this depressed woman. Honestly, if you wish to read back into the works, look at the type of spaces Magritte is depicting and think about how claustrophobic they are. In 1927, Magritte joined André Breton, Salvador Dali, and other artists in Paris. They became known as the Surrealists, creating unexpected, often dreamlike imagery. You both have an image, a self-image, of Magritte practicing his craft. At the same time as you have an image of his conceptual process, because the more you look, you realize, of course, he's staring at an egg. Right. But what is he painting? painting a bird. But he's painting a bird. Challenging the viewer's perception of reality would become Magritte's hallmark. He was something of a paradox. While his works defied convention, there was nothing of the artistic bohemian about him. He often painted in a suit and was married to the same woman, Georgette, for 45 years. Magritte lived a secluded life and died in 1967, but his whimsical, playful, mind-bending images had already been embraced by popular culture. His apple was the inspiration for the Beatles' Apple record logo, and rock album covers mimicked his designs. And how about this eye? Look familiar? And someone asked him what he thought about CBS appropriating his painting, The False Mirror, the eye filled with sky. The famous eye was based on his painting. On his painting. And he sort of felt indifferent about it because what CBS ended up with was just a symbol on a background that was aiming to sell something or brand something, whereas his painting had no purpose other than poetry. Billionaire and avid collector Wilbur Ross understands that poetry. He owns 25 Magritte's. Even Andy Warhol had Magritte. And I think you can argue that pop art couldn't have occurred without Magritte. Pre-Magritte, who would ever have painted a Campbell soup can? Is it fair to say you are the world's largest private collector of Magritte? Oh, I don't know. Probably the most active one right now. Right. It's just when you get obsessed, you get obsessed. Two of Ross's paintings are on loan to the exhibition, which is the first solo Magritte show in New York City in more than 20 years. What do you want people to feel and be left with after the show? I'd like them to understand what a great modern artist Magritte is. He's always saying a picture is just a picture. An image is not the same as the thing itself. In other words, look and think. Because in the world of René Magritte, everything is open to interpretation.